Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take global stories, making headlines in our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers this morning is Comrade Mark Adibaya, is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining the program. Good morning, viewers. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so we'll begin with the punch this morning. Even though most of this um, this head this particular headline is on is on most of the papers today, and it says governors ministers meet today to stop hunger protests. The writers here says reps ask federal government to embrace dialogue as Tinubu sues for peace. Another says Abiodun Uzodima Bauchi government condemned um, condemned planned rally above Benin urges patience. Well, on the Vanguard, it says hardship will handle matter, um, would handle planned protest as a family matter. On uh, the Daily Trust, it says dialogue with protest organizers, opposition reps tell a federal government. Um, the writers here says demonstration may com comprise peace. That's been said by the government. Tinubu needs more time. That's been said by the Oba, the Oba of Benin and governors. And finally, on the Guardian, it says tough times for poor Nigerians as food inflation worsens malnutrition. So everything talks about hunger, it talks about hardship. We have a protest that has been slated for the 1st of August. Um, but yes, the ministers, the, go the governors are saying that um, we should stop the protest and the Oba of Benin has urged for peace and we should just give this government a little bit more time. I want to get your take on this, knowing um, that you are a Nigerian as well. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're facing everything that each and every one of us is facing. There is hunger in the land, there's food insecurity, people can barely feed, people can barely afford anything. The minimum wage currently is 70,000 naira, which they haven't started paying yet. Um, and families still have to, you know, just take care of themselves. So. What do you think about the governors and the ministers, in fact, the government as a whole, saying that we should give them more time? Do you think that um, a year or a year and a few months is enough time to see what this government can do? And as of right now, how would you say they're faring or how would you say they're working and ensuring that we have a better country for ourselves? Well, the, the first thing I want to say is that Nigerians uh, have spoken and have spoken loudly. Uh, to the government. It's not left for the government to handle the situation strategically, responsibly, and timely. Uh, because um, a protest can get out of hand. We don't know the security implications and the collateral damage that could follow any kind of protest. Uh, protest. We saw what happened when the NSAS movement started well, well organized, but unfortunately, it was adjudged by miscreants and the rest of that. It's still going to be the poor masses that are going to suffer most uh, of the collateral damage that may, uh, that may follow. So for, to that extent, a responsible government by now should be in dialogue with the, with the organizers of the... They are, they, are, they, are, they are not faceless. They are not hidden. They are there. Um, they, 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 that should be. The, the, the government must begin to have dialogue, have conversation with Nigerians on how... how they want to go about it. Yes, you said you need more time. Uh, how long, how much time more do you need to fix this mess, to fix the hunger, the land, the unemployment, the land, you know, to stop the inflation? You know, we are, we are now on 34.2, you know. Uh, so, more time, how long, how, how much time do you need to, 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 to stop the mess? You know, I definitely I will not support anything that will lead to breakdown of, of law and order. That absolutely, I will not. And uh, this one, this time around, the politicians don't take advantage of this uh, of this situation. And, and because already I'm, I'm hearing statements from politicians and co. I, I'm one of them. But I'm hearing we do not politicize the people's the people's anger. Do not politicize the people's anger. The people are, are are making a demand from their government, and the government must pay attention, must listen, and take proactive action now. And for those who say that you stop protests, yeah. What you need to do is not to say stop protest. You cannot command their people to stop, you know, to stop the expression of their anger, uh, uh, the fact that they are suffering. We are, we are all suffering. And we are, I'm a parent. I have a large family, both nuclear and uh, extended. I know I have children in school. I know what I'm passing through to feed the family, to educate the children, to house. A lot of things have gone out of hand. And when the, not, only, not just the youth, it's everybody, all Nigerians, you will see that day do not be youth that will be on the street. If, if the government refuses to do the needful, to forestall it, 
Now, they need to cover dialogue. They, they have to hold conversation. There must be policies that there must be things that must be implemented to push on the effect of, of the policies of government. All that we are seeing, this, the, the inflation, the unemployment, the hunger in the land, high cost of living, all these are direct results of government policies. But we must do everything to make sure that there is no breakdown of law and order. That is where I want to pause for now. So if, you, if you're talking about policies and certain things, I know that for food, um, the government has decided to stop import duty for about 150 days. And so there was that point where they said we're going to send, I think, 1,200 um, trucks of grains to states, each state. There's also the fact that um, they were handing out, I think, 75,000 Naira as well to some people. Even though with all of these things, we really do not have the data. So we don't know the people that they're giving this to. But do you think these measures, because in a way, they can still come out and argue that, of course, we're trying to do something. You guys are ungrateful because we're putting these uh, measures in place, trying to ensure that we give you hands a uh, handouts. But do you think that is even enough and that is sustainable if we're saying that we want to fight inflation and ensure that everybody in Nigeria is okay? Well, uh, nobody, nobody in power today or yesterday, or day, or day before yesterday, who can come out and tell Nigeria that, that we are ungrateful. Nobody, I dare any one of them to say that. They, they, they dare not. Not the president, not the governor, not the minister, not the local government chairman or councillors or honorables or, or, or whoever cannot say. To, yeah. be, to be grateful for what? For the hunger? For the, for the lack of employment? For, for, for security crisis? For food crisis? I mean, nobody, to, to, to be grateful for what? For bad governance and corruption and, uh, and backwardness and integration. No, 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 nobody there. They, they are doing nothing. They are, they, as far as I, know, as I, I can see now, mm. uh, all this policy announcement, there's a difference between policy announcement and implementation. They have announced they are going to meet uh, interest rates, they are going to do this on food uh, importation. Senator Idume stood up on the floor of the National Assembly to say that the silos are empty. Nobody is going to release any grain to anybody. And the issue is this hand down, 75,000, 100,000, all these things. They, all these things are just a cut you know, policy, so and so. That have no direct bearing on the people. If you say they should go and give people 75,000, who, to whom are they going to give the 75,000 naira? And for how long is 75,000 naira going to survive under a 35% inflation rate? Mm. For how long? You see, what you need to do is not to begin to do, give hand out to people because it's not going to work. People are going, they are still going to steal the money by themselves and claim that they have released trillions of dollars to Nigerians and it will be untraceable. So, what you need to do is that to implement policies that will reduce food price, uh, cost of living generally, cost of living generally, cost of medical treatment generally. It, it is that it, it is policy, it is at the level of policy, it is at the profit of policy implementation that can directly impact on the people. Like, for instance, if you want to give people palliative, say that all, all federal government and state schools will cut tuition by 50%. That is direct palliative to the people. They are not giving 50%. Say for the next two, three years, government will pay for work for, 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 for the pupils and students. That is direct palliative to the people. I mean, at least once you are taking care of the education of the, of the, student, of the people, and you are taking care of food security and the rest of that, look, any other thing, people, Nigerians are okay. They, 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 we, we survive somehow. We man, we have been managing, but there's a level that uh, that we cannot go beyond to push him to people. We cannot push beyond to, start, to beyond a certain level, and that is what you are seeing. That is the reaction you are beginning to see. That people that ordinarily would not want to be, to, to be part of any protest are now saying, even the north is now saying, that, "Look, we'll be part of this one." So. It is left of the government now. It is not giving to 75,000 or 10,000 to anybody. Nobody wants that. That is not going to work. Because people, it is the people that they say you go and give them the money that is still more than 80% of the money. And you are not going to see, uh, you, are, you are not going to see anything. It will not, it will still not be, uh, it, will still, it will still not impact positively on the people. They said they want to import duty, remove import duty for a number of days for food items. It has not reflected in the market up to now. It has not reflected in the market. That is the issue. They must do things that can reflect the market that you will not be buying one to meet one piece of the middle for 500 naira. So that that it, it, when we begin to see the fact that the inflation rate is going down, we know that the policies they are implementing are working for the people. Whatsoever they are doing now, uh, uh, it's not working yet. It's not working yet. The government must listen to the people and fix the issue. 
The president said he should not be pitied that he applied for the job, he was going to do the job. For now, for over one year of his presidency, the legacy for now has been pain, hunger, anger, insecurity, and all manner of uh, you know, governance uh, challenges. That is what we have, we have witnessed. For him to roll back, to roll all those double negatives back, it is left for him to implement policies that will impact positively on the people. For now, there is nothing anybody can tell Nigerians that they have done for which we are we are ungrateful. No, 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 no. That, that, that's not even it. That's not even it. Let, no. let me just put this into perspective, these handouts that they're talking about. Let's use Cross River State as a case study. And let me go to my own local government, which is Ogoja local government. There was a secular that was... Uh, circulated that um how the the sharing formula was for the three senatorial districts and for a full senatorial district like the northern senatorial district there were five thousand four hundred bags of uh, rice um uh, beans and gary totaling a, a number of um, one thousand bags and this rice is um uh, 10 kg bags <laughs> 740 for this and then 25 kg is 60 of these bags and then beans 10 kg is 100 and gari 10 kg is 100 so that's a total of 1000 bags now this will go to local government i'm telling you from my village which is not the farthest to uh, the local government headquarters it will take you like two hours to get there so you will see the expanse of land that you're going to pass and all these places there are people living there so at least every community has at least a thousand people mm -hmm. and if a thousand people are living there we have like 17 clans that make up only one word where i come from so you can imagine what this thing what this so-called handouts will do the impact it will have on the people 10 kg of gary 10 kg of uh, of yes. rice or something it doesn't make any sense at all but my worry now is that even though we are saying that we do not want this protest what else should the government be saying at this point because we are trying to proffer some solutions i'm also worried because we've seen people who we do not know we have never heard of them now there are ngos that are coming to give warnings to the people of nigeria you must not protest or you're going to meet stiff resistance and then we've seen even in lagos here maybe the governor is doing well but in lagos here we've seen the national association of nigerian students lagos chapter saying that they are going to have a solidarity work from the 1st of August to the 10th, which is the mm. same time yeah. that this protest is supposed to happen. Instead of doing it maybe earlier to oh, douse yeah. the tension and all that. But we are seeing groups like that coming up, which means there's a possibility, a strong possibility, there will be clashes when it starts. And the people who are trying to do the protest, no matter how peaceful they want it to be, may not have a peaceful protest anymore. Is this what the government should be encouraging or what else should they be saying even if they don't do what should they be saying at this time because it's very important to calm the tension well uh, you see, uh, you are right. it, it, it's very important to de-escalate the situation uh, if not uh, things might get out of crisis uh, out of hands and then we're going to intractable crisis this which is which everybody must avoid because we cannot uh, on top of all these uh, terrible situation that we have or in this atrocious environment social economic environment, you cannot, on top of that, now have anarchy. You cannot. This so is what the government should be doing now. Like I said, I mean, like, like, like since yesterday, like since last week, or like last month, the government ought to gather, ought to talk to Nigerians. It's not about warning people don't go. Oh, I, I do not, in a way, because I, I look at who are the organizers, who are the people behind this, who are, I, I, and I hate all these political statements, all these politicians, Atiku and Co, talking about. They, they, they should leave the people alone because they are part of the problem. So we don't want people like that talking. They will discredit. They will discredit. They, they will whittle down the credibility of the of the plant protest. They should, politicians should shut, shut their mouth and allow at least the new activists to, to to handle this. And the government, what the government should do? <clears throat> the president himself was an activist. Was a pro democracy activist. By now, yeah. and, and he should call the people. He should call the organizers. Even. The stakeholders, even people who are not part of the of, of the of, of the plant protest, like the NLC, like NUJ, like the Nigeria Association, all 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 people even traditional rulers, call them and tell them what you are going to do to cushion the effects of this suffering in the land. That is suffering, that is mass suffering in the land. Everybody knows that. Nobody can say. even the president has acknowledged that 
at several fora that he know that there is pain in, in the policies that he's implementing and that he wished that there was any other way. But there was no other way. That's why he removed the uh, first subsidy. Now, it is the remover, the precipitate remover of, of that super subsidy that has now had, uh, you know, all this um, effect, the, the shale reaction on the economy and the society. So, if, if, what is if most important now is for the government to, to call for dialogue. It must call for dialogue before August 1. Uh, like, like I said, unfortunately, you know, these people, they are so comfortable, the people in government are too comfortable, they are so lackadaisical, and uh, uh, they, they allow things to get out of hand before they now begin to, there to be a reaction instead of a response. The response now, you cannot depend on soldiers and police or security agents to, to help you to manage uh, a riot if it breaks out. So, because the potential for protest to lead to riots, and anarchy are quite high, especially in, in the kind of situation that we are in Nigeria today. You know, Nigeria is like a balloon. It's like a balloon. If you push it, it will, it will improve. So the government can prevent this uh, protest, not by not by warning people, not by you know harassing people, not by blackmailing the protest, because under the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 has amended, the people who have the constitutional right to protest against bad governance. What we should protect against is some social political miscreants. Since using the opportunity of people who are a young provocateurs who want to be destabilize Nigeria, what we should not allow them to, 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 to be at the head of the protest. Those are the things we need to, 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 yeah, to, well. to prevent. Well, the federal now, government the has government said... The government has the responsibility now to call for dialogue and hold conversations, uh, uh, round table, square table conversations with these, the leaders of, the, of this protest now, before it is too late. Well, the federal government has said, that's on the vanguard, that we'll handle planned protests as family matter. Let's mm -hmm. see how that will play out, family matter, uh, of where the, all the family members are hungry. Uh, but um, a, a little bit away from that, still on the vanguard, a small headline up there is saying hardship, stranded foreign scholars grown as federal government slashes allowances. They're slashing allowances of students and then no other allowances back home are being slashed. So uh, I, I'd like your comment on that. Uh, yeah, you see, it is only the people, the citizens that the government always has to tighten their belts where they are having to fabulo take their stomachs. You know, and uh, you know, it is uh, only an irresponsible parent that will abandon his children studying abroad to the vagaries of the element. Because that's what I'm seeing. You are cutting the allowances. You have not cut the allowances of the National Assembly members. You have not cut the allowances of ministers. You have not cut the allowances of the of the president and the governors. And then we are losing about 20 billion to build the. Uh, uh, new resident or to renovate the re residence of the of the vice president and co. So uh, all, all these things are absolutely unacceptable, and it, it, it is it is actually they are actually provocative, and that's why you are hearing about uh, mass protests against hunger, against suffering, the land, this bad governance. See, and bad governance protests. That's why you are hearing about that. The people that are asking us to touch our belt <clears throat> are expanding theirs. I mean, we are we are in we in, we are in this case. Is the scales are the scales of justice balanced? They are not balanced. That is the problem because you are hungry. You see <coughs> your governor, you see your minister, and the convoy of 30, 40 vehicles with police and soldiers are everywhere protecting you. Where you are insecure, where you are hungry, where you are, you are, <coughs> you are immobile. Where you used to apply, where you used to apply for 500 naira has, has become 3,000 naira. And then what was used to buy for food for 200 naira has become 2,000 naira. And you see these people even partying. You see them abroad, you know, posting for photo for ground with their children who are graduating from uh, uh, secondary uh, school, school. Buying cars. Buying cars. Buying cars. Buying cars. So mm. this is this is provocative. Yeah, it's provocative. It is. All right. So let's just move away from that. So on the vanguard here, it says Dangote stop demarketing local industries. Uh, man cautions federal government. On the Daily Trust, it says, Dangote Refinery, man wants against the marketing local investments. What do you think about all that Dangote is going through right now? And especially with the fact that um, the president of Gabon, you know, is in talks with him on how to have like a cement plant 
there in Gabon. So we're seeing other countries that are trying to take our own local investors that we have here. For instance, we do not have a thriving, um, a sustainable environment for these uh, manufacturing industries. And of course, like we can see here on the um, headlines this morning, it says demarketing local industries. And of course, man right now is cautioning the federal government. I want to get your take on this, on all that is happening and how, we're, how Nigeria, do you think Nigeria is supporting these local industries that we have or we're just sending them away? So it's a push, um, it's a push factor. We're pushing them away while other countries are pulling them in. You see, it is, uh, it's quite unfortunate. It, it does seem to me that uh, some criminal elements are in charge of uh, Nigerian affairs. Uh -huh. Foreign companies are running away. They are packing up and going to other countries like Ghana, even by the Republic and Co. Yeah. Now, our own local initiative, our indigenous effort by Nigerians to support the economy, to support the government, to support the people, I mean, it, it is being frustrated by whoever. Whoever is doing this is an enemy of Nigeria. Whoever is doing this is guilty of treasonable felony. Whoever is doing this is guilty of terrorism, of socio-economic terrorism. Because, you see, when a Nigerian with that kind of initiative that everybody uh, has been, you know, placing, now that we told, oh, we will definitely find it working, oh, everything will go fine, that they probably will start buying fuel at 250 naira, 300 naira, or whatever. Now, now they are frustrating the man. They are frustrating the effort. They are frustrating the, the, the business. And it is affecting us. It is affecting the Nigerian people. Whoever is fighting this man is fighting against the Nigerian people. I do not see any support that the uh, government is giving to Nigerian uh, indigenous uh, uh, efforts in terms of business and industries. No, no, uh, industrialization. I do not see. If they, if they allow, let them show us what they have been, uh, how they have been supporting, how they have been supporting local, uh, local industries. In fact, even the uh, medium the media, small and medium businesses, what, what, how have they, have they been supporting them? They have not been supporting them, they have not been so, so supporting uh, even the big the big ones. The foreign ones are running away. Now, you are creating this incentive for indigenous business and industrial takeoff. I mean, this, it, 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 is, it, is, it is absolutely criminal and uh, uh, unforgivable. I mean, because, no, who could have thought that Dan Gote, if Dan Gote is facing this, who uh, what about those of us who are just regular Nigerians? What are we going to do? If that is facing this type of push back, push back from the government that is supposed to support the, 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 the efforts. Uh, uh, this, uh, what they call the full taba, uh, seems to probably be more powerful than our government, or they are part of the government, but they are now, they are, they are a government in government. They are a government inside government, and they, are, they seem to be more powerful than the government that we have elected. Because it does seem to me this is a deliberate effort to frustrate all the efforts of, of Dangote to give us fuel at a cheaper rate. All they are after is that Nigerians will not get fuel at a cheaper rate. They are, they are looking for a way that we can be buy fuel 1,000, 1,000, impossible 2,000 dollars per liter. So, because um, there are certain forces I do believe that who, who want to benefit from the destabilization of Nigeria. And that is why they are encouraging this type of policy. This, if Dangote can be lamenting this way, Oh God! Only God knows what other businesses are passing through. Smaller businesses are passing through. You know that, that is um, the kind of country we are in. And all these things will not be possible without government uh, culpability. It is absolutely it cannot be possible without government being culpable in this in this thing. I, I thought they were going to encourage Dangote because I thought they would see him as helping the government. I thought they would see him. Uh, 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 they would see that Dangote refinery refining. Uh, fuel uh, oil locally and distributing at cheaper rates and then to cushion the economic effects of the bad policies of government i thought we were going to see him as a friend and even partner with him and now he came out two days ago to say that he did not receive any incentive from government that it is personal is personal private effort 100 percent not a single incentive uh, a, a single incentive all they have been getting are disincentives and he said he paid 100 million us dollars for that expense of land that upon which has built uh, uh, the, 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 the value. So we we have, we have a country being ruled by people who do not believe that the Nigerian people should breathe. Uh -huh. so that the well, Nigerian masses will it be breathe. will it be a conspiracy theory? Will it be a conspiracy theory to say that um, 
uh, these people who are weakening our, our economy within Nigeria are being sponsored by external forces. Because there's a report also that says Dangote refinery may accelerate closure of Europe's existing 90 refineries. So maybe Europe is seeing this and they don't want it to happen. Mm -hmm. And that is why... And that's uh, on the Guardian. Yes. And, and if Dangote refinery succeeds, maybe the next thing will be, oh, because uh, of uh, climate change, we should stop using fossil fuel uh, totally. Mm. Uh, so that, you know, we'll go bankrupt and all that. So would it be a conspiracy theory to say they are being sponsored by external forces? Uh, you cannot rule that out. Can we add the, neo, the neoliberal policies of governments are policies that are being put down our throat by the West. So uh, the, Western, the, the Western powers and conspiracy uh, can, cannot be ruled out of, of this. And as well, uh, the, our, our government, people in government have subsumed themselves under some powerful forces, also some powerful global and international uh, uh, powers. So, uh, they, they want to do their bidding at all costs. I mean, you cannot do that out. Because, you see, I've never seen a situation whereby the West means well for, for Africa, uh, actually. That, that's nothing that... And none of their policies, none of their, their actions uh, really can be seen or said to, to work for the progress of Africa. All they are after is for the bankruptcy of Africa, is for the profitability of Africa. Even sponsor crews you know, in Africa to remove whoever's face they don't, they, 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 they don't like. So... Uh, we, cannot, we cannot rule that out. I, I, I believe that there, there is a local and ex, that, that, that is a local and external conspiracy to destabilize Nigeria's economy and thereby destabilize the country. I, I strongly believe that there are collaborators, there are internal collaborators in Nigeria who are working uh, hand in hand with people who have said Nigeria was going to disappear. But the year, I think they said, the first said that the year 2012, now this is the year 2024, we have survived. There are people, I, I believe there's a deliberate effort somewhere, there's a collaborative effort somewhere to ensure that this country goes under. But God will not allow them. And by those being Nigeria will survive, Nigeria will make progress, we shall succeed, we shall overcome all this. Uh, only one factor, all these issues we are having, all these crises we are having, is only one factor that is responsible for all these things. It is uh, all, everything boils down to leadership. Right. Everything boils down to leadership. We should not deceive ourselves. Well, Nigeria has not been fortunate to get the right leadership since independence date. All we have been getting are uh, transactional leaders who have no vision about how to get this country to make progress. Look at how Dubai, coming from UAE, coming from nowhere to overtake Nigeria a bit of this country in the 70s, 1971, 72, 73, the royal family of, of, of Saudi Arabia were going, were coming to the U University College of Spiritual Ibadan to treat their family. Royal family, go have a check me. The royal family of Saudi Arabia used to come to, uh, to UCH in Ibadan to, 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 to receive medical treatment. <laughs> to receive medical treatment. What do we do now? Nigeria, the big men in this country today, the big people in this country today, what we are they going? They are going to UAE, you are going to the United Arab, Arab, uh, Arab Emirates to, 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 to receive, uh, they are going to Egypt to, to, to receive medical oh, we, we, we are retrogressing and it is terrible. This issue of bad leadership, just to let you know that it is not start today. Mm. How did you get here? That uh, 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 if we are, we are making the kind of progress we are making at some point, especially during the first republic, especially in the southwest, under the rule of the southwest alone by today will be some will be a tourist, a global tourist att attraction. But what are we today? We, 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 we have the concept of being a, a tourist attraction. We have become a terrorist enclave because of bad leadership. Mm -hmm. All these things we are seeing is a response. Is it, it, it is. Because of bad leadership that we are having all these issues we are having, all the crises and the challenges we are having in this country. Only one. If you get our leadership right today, if you get a Thomas Sakara today, if you get a Nikwan Yu today, this country will be fixed in one year. People who have been there for one year said we should give them more time. A Nikwan Yu will fix this country in six months because it will kill corruption, it will destroy corruption, it will, it will, it will plug all the waste. The governor is not supposed to be entitled to more than four, three, four, four vehicles. Why are they going about with 30, 40 vehicles? They are terrorizing us on the way. Your president knows you don't get out of the way. They will break your glass and everything. You are, you are, they are provoking the people. We, mm. we, these are... Oh, my goodness. It's it's okay. it's we need, it's we need a, a, a brain reset. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Jibari, we need a brain reset. <laughs> I, 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 you see, when people say people should not go or protest, what other language do these people you understand? understand? Mm. Yeah. Now, they must understand the language quick enough to invite these people 
and then give us concrete agenda points of what we are going to do to fix the hunger, yeah. to fix the cost of living, the the, 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 the punitive cost of living, the prohibitive cost of living. You have to fix it, and then it is not it's, it's not tomorrow, it is today. Mm. It must be like, it should have been fixed like yesterday. The president cannot yeah, sit right. in Azure Rock and explain that dealers of the streets not to be uh, uh, Mr. Angry. Adebayo. We are angry because we are hungry. Mr. Adebayo. So, we are we are Mr. Adebayo. Mr. Adebayo. Thank you. Uh, you see, um, we need a brain reset, and maybe that's what is happening. We went back to the uh, almost colonial era to exhume our national anthem and brought mm. it back. Now they're talking about going to 1963 constitution because that was what worked at least a little bit more than what we are seeing today. So we are marching backwards to go and start again. Maybe mm. that's what we really need. Maybe I don't that know. might work. You know, go back we'll in time. Right. Of what anthem? Of what? Of what increasing value is a dead national anthem to a, to a, to a suffering Nigeria, to a hungry Nigeria? Mm. Of what value? I, I, I sang that thing when I was in primary school. I can't remember it today. I can't remember. So when you say Nigeria will hold it, hold what? It is, it is rather that Nigeria will fail the. We have failed Nigeria. We don't fail. Mm. Uh, imagine that. When the president said it is one of his policy trusts to go and assume national. What has the national anthem done for us now? In terms of fixing the economy, in terms of anger in the stomach, in terms of anger in the heart, in terms of disappointment. In terms of failed governance, what, 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 what is that going to do for us? So, um, but when, when people who are in government run out of ideas, all they do is to go, is to begin to put the cart before the horse and uh, confuse themselves and the entire populace. That's what has happened. This is just a confusionist situation. Like Nigeria is one big confused country now because the, the people who are, who are in government are absolutely clueless as to what to do to fix the mess that they have created in the first system. And that is why uh, we must revolutionize our leadership recruitment processes through mm -hmm. our elections. That is why we don't want anybody to rock the boat. We don't want the external forces who want Nigeria dead to now begin to sponsor crisis in our country. I, for now, I am waiting for what the government will do. They should call the people and have a conversation and dialogue. If that, if that is not forthcoming, if they are going to take Nigeria for granted, some of us who are saying, Let's bring these people to shape the because uh, uh, it's not because of the people in government, but because of we the people that we don't want crisis. Uh, you know, people, the people, some people, if they don't go out in, in a day, they cannot feed their, themselves or their families. Yeah. So, for the sake of the suffering masses, we don't want crisis, we don't want anarchy, we don't want breakdown of law and all that. So, let us, it's not about giving the government time, it is about giving, it's about encouraging them to call the people. And yeah. then for them to do things that will cushion the effects of their bad policies on the people. Right. Let's, give, let's give them that time to mm. be able to. The president, if he's watching this, I'm sure the, it, it will get to his attention. Engage in dialogue now. Engage in dialogue now. Call stakeholders now. Tell us what you are going to do differently from what you have been doing in, 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 over, in the differently from what you have been doing in the past one year. Let us see. Let us see. Let us see what you want to do. Let us hear what you want to do. Begin to do it like in, like expeditiously to make sure that the prices of food crashes, that the crash, let the cost of living crash, the inflation, take it away from 34 percent All right. Take sir. it down to 18 percent Energy proportion. Do something now before it is too late. It is your presidency, it is your legacy, and you'll be highly responsible for whatever happens to this country and to Nigerians. Uh, all right thank you so kid? much sir. i think you've said a lot and you've spoken like a true nigerian because these are the things that affect our daily lives um everything that you've highlighted i'm sure almost 80 to 90 percent of nigerians are facing um this same thing and we're hoping that we can start to choose the right leaders because it starts from that. It starts with having the right people in place that would govern this nation and take it to that place where we flourish as Nigerians. So hopefully um, they're listening and they start to tackle all of these things that you've highlighted and we just have a better country for all of us. I want to say thank you so much for coming, Comrade Mark. It's always a pleasure having a conversation with you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me, Plus TV Africa. Continue to do what you are doing. You know, promoting the interests of Nigerians. Yeah. And like I can do so because you are pro people, nothing can stop you from getting to this cards. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful to that. day, sir. Thank you so much.
All right, so we're speaking with Comrade Mark Adebayo. He's a public affairs analyst, and we've just been taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be discussing Oji Uzo Kalu's six-part time legislature to cut costs of governance. Please stay with us.